Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and for the second time to the Matter Custom Studio where this week we have my Jaguar S-Type in for a mini restoration is what I'm deeming it. However, today is going to be the make or break point really as to whether I can call it that because today we're going to be looking at the rust. We're going to be discovering the full extent of the corrosion over the almost 25 years this car has been in existence and hopefully we're going to find out that it is indeed something we can sort out. We looked around in the last video with Trav and we seem to think it should be something we can tackle. We've got a specialist welder coming in to help us today. However, there is a small chance, or I guess a good chance, that the corrosion could be that bad. It's not something we're gonna be able to tackle in a day or two. It might be something we need to really plan in advance a little bit more, get more materials for, dedicate more time to it. I've only got the car here for a few days. So if it is something we can do today and now, that'll be really interesting. But nonetheless, let's have a look underneath the car and see if we can find out a bit more about exactly what extent this corrosion has gotten into my lovely little beige jag. What are you saying, Trav? I am genuinely, it's, it, it's not actually all that bad. It probably just wants a really good clean up and just like, you've got a hole here, which just wants cutting out and probably a little bit welding in. But the rest of that we could clean up and just like reseal. Actually, Doesn't seem all that bad yeah. right now. But we need to look at the, the rest passenger the side, which is ordinarily yeah. on right hand drive cars, the worse side because it's on the sort of dirty side of the road. Let's see. So Trav, I've just seen you going at the, well, we've taken the plastic sill covers off, at least on this side, and I've seen you going at it with a hammer. What, what are we sort of looking at? Because this is all new to me. It's not actually all that bad. Okay. There's a hole here which wants sorting out, but overall, there's a lot of black under seal under there and it's going rusty under it, but I think it's only surface rust. And generally I think it'll clean up quite nicely. Sort out this hole up here and then we can just recoat it. And that's probably gonna sort this side out quite nicely. And um, it's actually quite thick metal, which is good. But we haven't had a look at the other side yet, so we need to get that seal cover off, the plastic cover. And that side's probably gonna be the worst being like hedge side. That sees most of the weathering, especially from like fields and stuff. So that could be a different story. Okay, so both sill covers are now off the Jag. We started with the driver's side. That came off nice and easily, supported by some plastic clips, although not all of them were there. So that was pretty easy to pull off. And well, you can see underneath the car from the sort of hammer test that Trav did sort of poking around, there weren't any holes in particular, maybe a little one up here, um, but not much sort of corrosion was deposited. However, and unfortunately, on the passenger side, as expected, it was worse, but it was a lot worse, as you can see from the mess under there. There is uh, a lot of corrosion on this side, so much so it's gonna need, well, replacing entirely. And so the problem with that is that it's not something we're gonna be able to do today. It's a little bit more of a undertaking than just a couple of steel patches. Um, this is gonna require basically both sills being cut out and replaced. And it's gonna take, you know, several days of manpower to do such a thing and probably about a thousand pounds. But we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go forward. We'll have a little bit more of a detailed look at exactly what we're playing with. Uh, but yeah, this is yet gonna be another conundrum in the sort of 
what I do with the car. Do I just again cut my losses at this point or have we gone so far now that we just need to get this sorted as well? So as Joel just mentioned, unfortunately, we can't really go any further with this at the minute and that is purely and simply because the inner sills on this are just so rotten. Most of what you are seeing here on the floor is an inner sill of a Jaguar S-Type and we don't really have the time currently to sort that out. We're gonna have to order in parts as well. And it would also be nice to replace the outer sill on both sides. Although the driver's side isn't actually all that bad, but it just seems a waste of time tidying up that side to not do anything with it this side. So for the time being, we're gonna send Joel away, unfortunately, with a hole in the bottom of his car. But we can put the sill back on with more fixings than with what was holding them on, at least. Um, but for the time being, yeah, as Joel just mentioned, we're gonna have to figure out between us and see where Joel wants to go with this as to what actually gets done. So in other words, it's not the best of news. Obviously, I wanted to sort of get this done today so that you know it was sort of out of the way and then tomorrow we could look at doing the suspension and want to do an oil change. You've got a couple of bits you want to do to it. Yeah. So I guess I'm just a little bit like, ah, because I was sort of hoping that we would get this done. And now I'm a little bit worried because I, I, I'm just, I guess there's no way of getting around it. I'm a bit worried. It's like- It's just a big pet to the car, it's structural as well. Is it gonna have to be scrapped or can this be sorted? <laughs> no, it's all sortable. Really? <laughs> no, it's all sortable. <laughs> Because I really, I don't, you know, I don't want to get rid of it, but then I'm just in this conundrum where I've spent already five grand on, on the car, and yeah. is it going to be thousands to get this, like, back I mean, on the road, like, properly? Or Panels aren't actually all that expensive to buy for this. Okay. So that thrown in, you know, a couple of days' labour, you're probably talking sort of around a thousand pounds, but that is to do the inner and the outer sills. Um, and is that... Well, that sort of future proof the car for many years to come in terms of oh yeah the road. Yes. Oh, really? yeah the lifespan it's going to give to the car will be massive other than i think the car will just rust around your new sills okay because <laughs> so it is still a, an yeah. old jag yeah <laughs> but um apart from that yeah but it's, it's not this is not fatal news the car still i still be able to drive no, the car home it's not total plan yeah. to to get it back for some proper welding oh yeah it would okay. be different if it was like chassis legs yeah okay. we'd probably be talking a Bit of a different conversation, but it's sills. This is sills. Yeah, and it's a pretty common thing in like the whole restoration sort of side of a car. You know, sills are just pretty common for rust. So it's, yeah, it's not a massive worry. It's all doable. So essentially, I think what Trav is saying is that it, it, I think when I first saw all of that rust coming off that sill, I was thinking, you know, this car, I've, I've, I've made an error again, spending all this money on it, it's gone. But by the sounds of things, it is something that can be sorted. It's something that's not going to be completely horrendous financially, but it's something I'm going to have to think about. I'd love you guys to comment. What would you do? Is it worth just spending that thousand pounds or so to keep this thing driving for many more years to come? Or should I just cut my losses now? Although to be honest, saying that out loud, I think I know what the, the right answer is. One silver lining though, is we're actually gonna take the battery out and put it on a reconditioner overnight because, well, they have one here and this has been a little bit low on voltage, let's say. So maybe it might bring it back a little bit. Otherwise, I think it will still be a new battery job. But yeah, we'll do that now quickly. <music> They, um, if a battery has got is dropped voltage a lot, these are quite good at chucking loads of power back into the battery quickly to try yeah. and sort of if the cells bottom right out, they won't take charge very well. And that will now start pulsing in varied amount of amps to hopefully bring it back to life. So given that we're not going to be doing any rust work now, the plastic sill covers have gone back on. Now, because all of the plastic clips that were still there are also pretty rusted, the ones that actually secure the sill covers, to save that dropping off when I drive this back to the London area, we're gonna rivet the sill covers in so that when we 
you know, come back to tackle the rust. The seal covers will still be there and we'll be able to take them back off properly. But yes, yeah, so I think we will definitely come back and get it sorted. It would be such a shame to let this car go to waste for just a little bit of rust, essentially. Well, it's quite a lot of rust, but it would be a shame to let this car go to waste. It's probably how most of these cars have met their end and there's just not many left on the road at all. And I don't want this to be another statistic. News on the battery then, unfortunately, uh, it's come up as, well, basically the battery is beyond sort of saving. So um, this will go back in the car, it will get me home, but now I'll know that uh, I need to order a new one um, going forward, so that's fine. That's a nice and easy thing to switch out. So I'll order one of those. Probably get that as well when I get my brakes. And uh, I'll get that battery swapped. But yeah, shame, unfortunately, this is not saved. Okay. It's in. Coughed, it? No. Oh. Oh, no, that isn't. It's not in. No, it's not in. <laughs> <laughs> Now what? So I think I'll leave the riveting to the expert down there, but all is not lost. Although we're not doing the rust this time around, we've still got a few things to do in the next episode, namely uh, some rear shocks, the suspension. I've got a window regulator for the driver's side door. That's always been a pain in the ass, not being able to open the driver's side window, especially at things like drive-throughs, it's a nightmare. Also gonna do an oil change on the car. The service history is kind of interesting. It's not very clear when that was last done. So we're gonna get that done. Going down the line as well, although we don't have time to do it now, I think a gearbox flush is probably in order. Again, don't know if that's ever been done to the car. So it just makes sense to do that. If we're gonna go down this road of sort of restoring it. But for today's video, which I had sort of planned as being a whole sort of rust work video, I can't really show you much else. Everything's back as it is. The, Sills are being riveted back on, or the plastic seal covers. We'll get the car back off and it will be up again on the ramp tomorrow or in next week's episode for some works, which, well, I'm really gonna get my hands dirty. I'm gonna try and replace a rear shock or two myself. So it should be a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks again to the guys here. Make sure you do go and check out their video on their channel from this whole series. Um, it's really interesting and lots of behind the scenes stuff that you wouldn't have seen over here so thanks again to them thanks again to you for watching and i'll see you all very very soon <laughs> is that my car so that is your inner sill mostly wow do you want to take it with you <laughs> so you're gonna yeah. i'll put it in an urn and stick it on the mantelpiece <laughs> Mate, you can make a couple of coins out of that, can you? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's Joel coin. <laughs> if you went to the scrapyard, you could weigh that in. <laughs> <laughs> what, you got a hole here. Yeah. But, um, we could drill that out to a big hole and just put a bung in it. I'm joking. <laughs> do, they do, eight, do, they, do they do eight inch bungs? <laughs>